day um, discrimination where you would have, I was treated different from other people, from, from white people. I was, I was treated different. And this was an everyday thing. And this is, this is why you were employed with the city of Chicago? Yes. They have a lawsuit against them now. Because um, from what I understand, it's even worse there now. That's what usually happens. When people keep getting away with discriminating and hurting people, then they get worse with it. And in the paper, they're saying that there are emails now where they even call them the N-word and everything. Now, they never did that to me. But they just, you know, would treat me different in terms of what the um, the way that they were doing the white engineers and the way that they were doing me when you go out to get a car or you or you go out for an assignment, when they come and talk to you, everything was just always um, a different treatment. How? Like how? Give me an example of how they treated you differently. Okay, I'll give you an example. I would get. Um, an old vehicle that would break down on me, and I'm pregnant to to drive out. I was pregnant with Kim Uel to drive out to the west side of Chicago, which is dangerous. While they will give the new college kid that just came off the street of the, a brand new vehicle, and so that's like one little example. Then there's example the bigger ones is like when it was time for me to get a pay raise. And to get my um, promotion, they want they've tried to force me to teach, to train other people to be my boss. So and and then there were times where um, white, for example, white guys could cuss. They cussed each other out. They were cussing each other. F you, f you. You see what I'm saying? And Joe, Joe Vinsel was doing stuff to me. And I told him, I said, you're being an asshole. I got rolled up. Okay, I know that that probably seems like you're supposed to just swallow all of that. Um, they would come to my face complaining about my black friends at work who were making too much money. I'm sitting over there on that job. While I would point out, what about... The white lady that's sitting there doing her nails that can't do, don't even know how to do her job. And, you know, this is, I'm just giving you a few of the situations. It's painful every day, day in and day out. You know, your job is to. How did. You, go ahead. Um, what, why did you decide to finally leave your employment at the city of Chicago? Because of what the doctor had said, and I knew it, that I was going to die early. He said, the doctor said I would not see my 40th birthday if I stayed there. And I knew it. I, I See, and I can't help my body. That's the kind of body I have when I am upset. And he, I'm very emotional from being mistreated. I don't, do, I don't handle mistreatment, being mistreated very well. And so that's how I wound did up you, living. Did you, and then where did, what did you do after you left the city of Chicago? Nothing. I was disabled. Other than my own um, life ventures, then I wrote a book. Um, before I even left the city, I had started doing a lot of studies. I'm uh, a self-taught where I went to the library and just stayed in the library studying how our condition got like this, why situations are the way they are. So I did a lot of studying to understand um, the situation. Um, and then I wrote a book. When you say the situation, what do you mean the situation? The, um, the situation of humanity, you know, where... Um, people treat each other the way they do, you know, um, the, um, racism, religion, you know, um, all of it, the whole origins, where did we come from? All of that. I went into studying it. When did you move to Indiana? I moved to Indiana in 97. 
And did you move to Marion immediately from yes. Chicago? Yes. And did you ever file any sort of complaint against the city of Chicago? Only with the union. Because the union steward, he used to feel so sorry for me. Um, he was a little Jewish, short little Jewish guy that used to always um, really push for me to be filing for what they were doing against me. You know, making me do other people's jobs and all this stuff, you know. Um, other than that, I think I did put a complaint in with the human relations. Um, the nice thing is they can't fire you as long as you know your job and you do a good job you're doing what you're supposed to do they can't fire you but there's absolutely no help to get them to stop tormenting you or to treat you equal you can't you can't make that happen you know mm -hmm. just like with how the civil rights was they they're supposed to investigate but they didn't come out and they didn't investigate they so badly didn't investigate they didn't even know who lived in the house they didn't know that my grandchildren were on the lease, you see. But yet, they just they just take the side of the corporation. So that's a part of our system that has a problem with it. It's set up so that even when you do go to these organizations, now you have um, another um, entity that's against you because... They're not going to come out to tell what's going on, but yet they're going to say, oh, we investigated this, and this is what happened. And that's what they do. So what happens? You filed a complaint with the union. What happened with that? With the union? They always got dismissed, pretty much. That's what they always did. And there was a lot of them because... He would. He was the one that was. I think it's. It must be something bad when they're making you do work that you're not supposed to do. Because I didn't really mind the work. Um, what I hated was how I was being talked to, how I was being treated as if I was, a, you know, um, a not human. That's what I hated. But um, they, the union people, don't like that. But what I don't understand is, is that did anything come of it? Nothing ever came of any, anything with what they the, were doing. So then besides the complaint with the union, you said you recall filing a complaint with human relations. When you say human relations, do you mean an administrative agency? Yeah. Yeah. And do you recall what? ever came of that complaint? No, because no, I remember by then I was already knowing there's just no help. So I know I didn't follow up or anything. They didn't follow up. And, you know, you knew that you weren't going to get any help. And so your your employment with the city of Chicago was the last time you were employed, correct? Yes. No, there was a two months employment with this box company for two months where I tried to just work a regular job. And that was and where? That was here in Marion. They're closed now. It was Bosch? What was it? What was the it was a box company. Oh, box. I don't remember the name of it. Okay. And you worked there, you said, for two months? Yes. And why did you discontinue working there? My time was up. I was a temp there, and my time was up, and um, I decided that that wasn't going to work out for me because I noticed that um, they demand you to move really fast, and so I'm a sweaty person when I move really fast, and so, yeah. In other words, they work complaining that I was sweating all over their boxes and stuff and it just got nasty and I said to myself I needed to realize I was a professional I'm not a, allowed to be a professional here and don't try because I really wanted to not this was before I went back on disability 
because I wanted to, even if I was working at McDonald's or something, to be able to just, by me being a regular person, I wouldn't be, because I don't, I don't mind the work, and um, I just wanted to be able to work, but I, I saw I wasn't fast enough, and I was too sweaty, and, and I was a mess, so I went ahead and didn't try that anymore as well. And so then after your short um, two-month stint with the box company, that was the last time you worked, correct? That was the last time I worked. Okay. 